All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and pets, welcome back to the 2021 Wall Rift Asia Bra, brought to you by Trovo.Live. We're in the group stage, week two and day two. The third match of the day, we have Berjaya Dragons taking on the giant, the Goliath, the one and only Sengoku Gaming. Is it going to be an upset story or is this going to be a one-sided domination? We shall find out in the upcoming matches. The first game of Ben Pick is already underway. What I know from our admins is the game is about to start. But before we get started here, now I do want to invite our wonderful caster D2 to run us, uh, to run the current situation, the, the group. Like what, what happens if either one of the team wins? Um, can you quickly tell the viewers about that situation? Will do, it, Dave. <clears throat> so, uh, Sengoku is 1-0, uh, Virjaya is 0-1, and, and we obviously saw Liab win earlier, so they're 2-0, and, and Victim is 0-2. So, if Sengoku Gaming win, it's very, very straightforward, right? Liab and Sengoku are in, Virjaya and Victim are out. If Virjaya wins, then it gets a little bit more complicated because Sengoku could potentially beat Liab, and then, you know, it could cause a 3-way 2-1. Um, however, Sengoku being the favorites here, I think this might just go very, very straightforward, and I think that Liev and Sengoku might get out of here. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested. I, I think this is going to be a, a matchup. I'm expecting it to be extremely Sengoku favor, just from what I've seen from Bajai Dragons previously. Um, I, I, I think they, Sengoku have come in with a lot of hype, right? So I, I think this is going to be like a tough matchup for Bajai to actually get the win in. Yeah, Berjaya did put a scare into Liab a little bit. They did still lose 2-0. Uh, just to give you some background information, we don't know a whole lot about Berjaya, but we did see them lose to Liab 2-0 last week. Whereas Sengoku have multiple pros. They have um, two Korean pros from another mobile mobile game and two Japanese pros from the same mobile mobile game. I don't know uh, who the last... Their, their last player is Curse no Imoto, which means Curse's little sister. I have no idea who that person is, but basically it's Slash Moon. Curse's <laughs> so. little sister. That's a great name. <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. Can, 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 you, can, you can read all the names, right? Uh, I well, I can... The, the, the Japanese is the names of the actual characters. The, um, uh, the player name. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it just says oh, Arisa. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. It just says <laughs> Mish, <laughs> Nishin, uh, uh, Wait, what the heck? Twisted of Heito. <laughs> more, more it, Arista. Wait, wait. Actually, could you explain to me how how do, how does it translate into like the, the English names? Like, is, is it like the sounds that they translate over? Like, that's, this is actually really interesting because I never really thought about it because I would have thought they would have had like separate sounding names, but how do they actually no. make the translations? Well, if his name is Twisted Fate, then they're not going to change the name into like, you know, Twisting uh fatal <laughs> it's not gonna be like yeah yeah like alistair like alistair is not like it's like a name isn't it right so like yeah like, it's just Adi how you... yeah, it's uh, okay Adi Star, I, yeah. honestly it's just really cool like i i just never really never really thought about it honestly um but yeah, I assume I that's how that... it is in Korean too korean is very similar where they just like have yeah because it's like it's because like the little the little um I was re I was actually reading like I was starting I was thinking about learning Korean and I someone's linked me this document and it shows you like and I I, I don't know if it's the same in Japanese but it's a little, little document that shows the, the the little shapes that you make mean a sound and so like you yeah. like the the you, you like you just chain the sounds together to create like syllables and anyway yeah it's, it's it's a whole different world of languages that I didn't think I could yeah. get my head around to be honest with you. But, well, yeah, the, we go. The, the beginning of Japanese at the very very beginning of Japanese is similar because every letter is just a separate letter so like. If there's like ka, for instance, ka is always ka. It's never pronounced differently based on situations. Always ka, no matter what. Um, mm. Whereas Korean, it's like more complicated in the beginning because you put different, uh, you combine different sounds together, like k and a, and then it's ka, right? But later on, Korean's way simpler because you have to learn two different alphabets in Japanese plus an entire Chinese writing system. So <laughs> it ends up being way, way simpler in <laughs> Korean. Because like yeah. there's this guy, there's this guy in Korea. Like, I think 300, 400, 400 years ago, he specifically went out to make Hangul, to make a very simple writing system. And I got to say, uh, Koreans better think they're lucky stars for that guy because all the other all the other <laughs> languages are complete just mess. And Korean's the only one that just actually makes sense because the guy decided to, like, make things make sense like 400 years ago. <laughs> Oh gosh, and it's just me and my my stupid Britishness and I can barely speak one other language, which is French. So there you go. 
I do wish I could speak more languages. I'm not going to lie. I wish I'd put more time into it. So kids, if you're listening, invest time into learning other languages. It's uh, it's a great skill. It absolutely is. Well, <laughs> we have our game already underway. We have uh, Dejuo and Slash Moon, our Japanese pair here up in the dual lane. Uh, not doing any, uh, you know, switching shenanigans. They are in that dragon lane. It looks like it's going to be a little bit of a <clears throat> potential engage here as, oh my goodness, a triple knockoff from our Alistair. <laughs> and there God, comes the dude. massive damage in. That is a double kill right off the bat. And they're putting some pressure onto the Corky as well. And he's going to fall in the back. That is a 3-4-0. And Sengoku showing exactly why they're the favorites. I, I need to take a shower. Like I should just need to straight up take a shower. Like what? A, like that is disgusting. Like what did I just watch? That I mean, Alistair rest here. By the way, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, uh, let's look again at the replay. I mean, you don't even need to. You don't even need to analyze. Do you? You know why this fight was won? This is just absolutely filthy. My yeah. God. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is what they've done. You know, Rush has always been someone who's very, he just moves like clockwork through the jungle. And then, you know, he's just very good at making sure he gets fed and gets farmed up. And then he's going to rotate at the time that he rotates. And sometimes I can make him predictable from the other team. But, you know, if you're like a decent team and know your rotations, like boom, you kill everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they've already got such an advantage here. Here comes the Twisted Fate. Where is he ganking? Bot lane takes the Camille out. And that's why Twisted Fate, I think, has been banned and, and it's been high priority for a lot of our uh, our teams in the Asian Brawl Tournament. He's got such good map presence. The ability to influence the map very early on is, is insane. Obviously, he's maybe not the best team fight mage in the world, but he's not looking to get his advantages through team fights. He's just mainly looking to get his advantages through the side lanes. And right now, it's, it's looking very dominant for Sengoku. Oh, no. Absolutely dominant. Oh no, there was a rotation over to kind of deal with it. But actually they already they took out the the vibe, but looks like three were taken out in the end. So Brajaya showing oh, wait, some life Akali, here. Excuse did, me? Did Akali just get three kills? Did Akali literally just pick up three kills herself? I yeah, I think so. I think so. Because oh, wow, they there, there was a gank over in the bot, like you mentioned, to take out the Camille. Two rotated over to try to uh, deal with it. They got the kill onto Vi before anything could happen, but then it looks like Akali cleaned up the rest of them, so very nice by the Akali, and she's going to be a force to be reckoned with going forward. Yeah, well, I'm a little worried now, because, you know, a really fed Akali can absolutely one-shot carries uh, in team fights. Akali has got buffed a couple of patches ago, and, you know, she has, I, don't, I don't think she spiked in win rate, because I think she's really hard to play properly, uh, but I think that, you know, in the right hands, Akali is one of the strongest champions in the game. So I think, you know, you have to be very careful here now if you're going into Bajaya Dragons. That's a very, very, very fed Akali that you've already got to deal with coming into this first dragon fight. Yeah, we'll see how they deal with her going forward. But at the moment, looks like there might be some sort of skirmish around this uh, Cloud Dragon here. Um, <clears throat> we'll see what how the teams intend to do this. In the past, uh, Sengoku has... Opted to kind of take it very, you know, safely, uh, setting up position around. But it uh, looks like they're going to try to initiate them, initiate it themselves. But as Burjaya come in to uh, potentially contest it, uh, Zengoku is scared off. And they're going to go ahead and back off because they don't want to risk it. Looks like, however, though, Akali is getting pushed on by Rush in that mid lane, pushing the Lee onto none of the members of Zengoku are taking damage. But... Most likely, uh, Akali probably took the brunt of that damage. She did have to run away. The uh, Brahm's going to go ahead and try to scare multiple members off. They are congregating in this center lane. Uh, the Misfortune gets jumped upon, but they immediately jump back onto the Vi, and they take her out in a matter of seconds. And that is the green light to go ahead and go for this dragon. Can they take it out here? It is falling to about half health, uh, at least on my screen it is. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, you guys are if you guys are in the past. But uh, they are able to safely take this dragon, rotate on over yeah that was not a clever engage from the vi um i wonder if she was intending on using that to jump okay so this is something that i have done before on vi quite frequently obviously when you have an ability and you accidentally take your, your finger off the aim it will always auto target the closest enemy i'm wondering whether vi intended on actually jumping over the wall but instead accidentally just let it auto cast onto the corky oh sorry onto the misfortune because it mm. definitely felt like that was not the most sensible of engages with, um, that I've ever seen in my life, honestly. Yeah. It, it just seems like she got... I, I think that she might have just gotten like big eyes for misfortune. Like, oh my goodness, I have a chance to go get on her. And then just immediately got turned on. Uh, I, it's hard to tell which was which. But we all know that she got deeply punished there. 
Uh, looks like we're t uh, as we take a look at Dejibo, just kind of scouting out the area, throwing wards here and there. Uh, Misfortune and Alistair have left the uh, top lane a little bit scarce. Corky going to go ahead and push that in while they are jumping onto this Braum in the mid lane. But it, <clears throat> as that, all that happens, there was actually a massive congregation up top. Miss Fortune is jumping. How is she still alive? She gets, she finally gets taken down by the Camille in the end. But in exchange, both the Camille and the Vi go down. And Sengoku is on the chase. Ult comes out from Braum to try to keep everyone alive here. Akali just put some damage out as well just to ward them off. But it's still a two for one here in favor of Sengoku. And even more importantly, Lee Sin just drops the Rift Herald on that bottom side of the map and clearly takes potentially two turrets off the back of <laughs> here as well. Yeah, that's a, like that's a really big pickup. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the point of the game is to get those turrets, right? Looks like, I'm not sure if Brom's going to be able to take out that uh, the Rift Herald before it does push in, but they had multiple members over. Look Multiple members pushing here on to this mid lane, but they're going to go ahead and back off as the side of Brajaya Dragons is there to meet them. And it looks like both teams are going to slightly raise head here. I'm not really sure if an engage is going to come through, but um, just kind of testing the waters. Yeah, it still feels like uh, right now the uh, the driving seat firmly in for Sengoku. They've got a, lo a lot of champions that sort of been getting fed at this point in time. They've taken out a couple of turrets. I was taking out the first turret of the game at the very least. They have that second dragon spawning within a few minutes as well. That'll be the next point of contention. Uh, remember, there is a lot of scaling on the side of Bajaya Dragons, though. You have Camille, who scales really well as a split pusher. You have Vi, she scales well. You have Corky, one of the best scaling uh, ranged carries in the game. And uh, obviously, Akali will always be good into the late game with her ability to delete a single target. Definitely feel like the pressure is on uh sengoku to turn up and make this uh this uh this game work for them because misfortune although she is an okay you know ad carry she's going to get out of scale by corky twist's fate is not best in in sort of a team fight situation he's more of a single target focus and obviously malphite and, and lee sin they, they they're not exactly going to be huge damage dealers in the late game so for sengoku i definitely feel like they are under pressure to be the ones to end this game quickly uh, rather than drag it out because i feel like they're going to get out of scale eventually yeah, exactly. On the pressure here is on Sengoku to end the game, and the pressure is on Berjaya to extend the game as long as possible so that they can get to those power spikes that you mentioned. Uh, however, <clears throat> speaking of end the game earlier, it looks like um, Sengoku is trying to do just that. They do end up taking out that very flimsy tower over in the bot lane. Well, the top lane, but the bot lane on your screen here. And they're kind of just setting up here. This is exactly what we saw last week, just very calculated, uh, very formulaic, and not really rushing into things, despite the fact that, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. they, they need to um, be the ones who need to be aggressive. But they're just going to take their time, see when they can get picks at the right moment, and uh, take the objectives as necessary. The next dragon has uh, appeared here, and we'll see if they decide to go for it. Again, just setting up shop, not really just jumping on it right away. Yeah, maybe oh. just looking for a pick opportunity with a Twisted Fate. You know, they have got uh, the advantage here. They could pop the ultimate, try and find something. There's a lot of uh, very mobile carries to have to worry about, though. If you if you pop the Twisted Fate ultimate, Corky can just Valkyrie away. Um, you can have the Vi just dive away as well. But they are going to go straight for this dragon. So I, I think that in a pure teamfight situation, I, I'm not entirely sure about the strength of this uh, Sengoku roster. They have to. They really have to have the Malphite here, I think, to land that pure wombo combo that they're looking for. Uh-oh, the dragon got extremely low. It does go over to Lee Sin on Sengoku. Are they going to go fish for a fight here? Multiple members are in this Ooh. mid lane. Only Camille on the bottom. And <clears throat> the Deji will going to take a bit of damage. Going to go ahead and back off. And looks like Sengoku is just happy with what they've taken. And they're going to go just spread out on the map once more. Happy with their dragon. Akali actually managed to dodge away from the engage quite nicely there. Looks like they're going to try to aggressively push onto this Malphite under turret, though. Malphite does, uh, was aware that this was happening. I wonder if he'll be able to survive long enough. Taken down very low. It is a three-man engage, though. He will just drop, and that'll be yeah. a turret. This is a nice response from Bajaya Dragons. Yeah, very well done there. Realizing where the team was weak, where, where their opponents were weak, I should say. And uh, <clears throat> Alistair's going to try to save this by his lonesome here. He knows that the Camille's ult has already been used on the Malphite. And the rest of the Sengoku just not... I guess they're just going to be pushing onto this mid turret in exchange here. Uh, that's their. That's what they're just gambling here, right? The That uh, Alistair can hold off, and they're going to go ahead and take a turret for it. 
Uh, again, this is good. These are good traits of Bajaya dragons. You take you take these turrets uh, where you can. I think you know picking up the kill on the cork in the vibe was absolutely uh, a massive bonus here for for Sengoku. But you know, if you if you Bajaya dragons, you, know, you keep the game relatively even. You know, make sure you're not losing too much before sort of say 15 minutes. And actually, you know, you are going to start to scale relatively effectively. Camille has to be careful here, though. Twisted Fate is making his way up. Yeah, they absolutely are. They're they're pushing after that Camille. They actually just took down that turret. That's one more to their name. So the entire first row of turrets here for Sengoku has been demolished. Um, not really a whole lot of uh, objective on the map other than that. So it looks like it's really going to only be picks and you know, waiting for the next dragon, potentially maybe going for some more turrets. There's going to be uh, just a, a collie out of the woodwork, just kind of here, and she's almost dead, and she's dead. Huh. That was a good <laughs> pick. But honestly, this Alistair is a smurf, dude. This Alistair is so strong at just finding these picks. He's been very, 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 very good. Um, and I, I think like, that was a beautiful pick onto the Akali. I don't know if she just didn't have smoke screen available to her, but she didn't even try to pop it to buy time. And now you see some posturing around the Baron right now for, uh, uh, for Sengoku. It? I mean, they are right now. I mean, Dejwe may be looking for another one of those headbutt uh, or pole of combos. He's going to go jump into that front line, maybe looking for Corky oh, here. Oh, Vi gets taken down by the lease and just immediately pops her as he jumps onto her slash moon. Extremely low, does have the GA if things go completely awry, though. But Sengoku is completely dominating this fight. They get a 3-4-0, taking out the Vi, the Camille, and the Brom. And uh, the the misfortune stays alive in the end, using her lifesteal to get right back up to full. Yeah, they'll be uh, very easily able to take this Baron Sengoku, as you said, methodical in com complete control. And I've got to, I've got to give massive credit to Sengoku. Uh, it's one of those games that I genuinely, I genuinely feel like you can learn a lot from. They, they are so controlled with how they approach the objectives. They don't do it completely randomly. They always turn to fight if the enemy tries to engage them, and they feel that they're stronger in the team fight situations. This is the, this is the clean, methodical way that you want to approach these, these, uh, these objective, uh, objective takes. Um, the only thing that you know, Singoku still have to worry about in the back of their mind is they need to take, you know, take advantages with this Baron. They need to look to take more turrets, push onto these inhibitor turrets, because the problem that they'll face eventually is clearly going to be the situation where, um, you know, they get outscaled by the, the enemy team. But right now, they don't have to worry too much about that. They are, they are definitely in the driving seat. They just need to try and get onto these turrets and they, again let the Baron minions do their work. That was just very sad. Four members of Brinjaya were trying to take out two siege mages, and they couldn't take it out fast enough because the siege mages just beefed through it and took out the uh, the turret. There, that's just that's just really funny and sad at the same time. Well, in the meantime, it looks like Sengoku going to be pushing onto this turret. Take it out immediately. There is inhibitor turret number one falling. So if you're worried about their aggression, there it goes. Camille just trying to throw out a leg kick to see if they can slow them down at all, but. You see Twisted Fate on your mini-map there, rotating over to that top turret. Just continuing to push in on these turrets is the side of Sengoku. Good? Yeah, it's really, really good stuff from Sengoku, actually, D2, because you can see Lee Sin peels off to do the Infernal Drake himself, uh, and they're still utilizing that Baron buff, still threatening more turrets. If they can get this second-tier turret in the top lane, uh, that's going to be such a big win for them. They have a few... Uh, seconds of Baron left to might maybe even push on to an inhibitor turret. They are pushing two lanes at the same time. This is just really clinical from Sengoku. It reminds me of like old school Korean League of Legends teams where they took no risks and they just and they just played the map. Beautiful stuff. Amazing engage coming through. This could just be game. Yeah, exactly. They jump in. Here comes the ult out from Camille, but she dies immediately. Vi is already down. So too is Braum. Malphite's on a single whisker of health, but he's staying strong. That is the complete team ace, and that is game one going over to Sengoku as they take up Rajaya Dragons. Oh, it's just, it's just, honestly, this is the best game of Wild Rift I've seen in the Asian Brawl so far. Sengoku really looked like something else compared to a lot of the teams that I've seen. Like, it was just pure clinical. Couple of mistakes in some team fights, but you know, you, you expect that when it comes to some, some of the messy team fights. But like, honestly, the, the way they played around neutral objectives, the way they, they played the minion waves as well, the way they, they handled the minion waves to essentially play into their favor. Like immediately after Baron, they had the minion waves to work with to go for the side lane turrets. They played the one three one excellently with Twisted Fate pushing in a side lane. Um and you know that one Baron, they took so much with it just just through just clinical execution. Honestly, I think this is the team to beat in our tournament, Dave. 